1988 Topps Baseball Cards, 25 Most Valuable, plus Bonus Listings. To say that the 1988 Topps Baseball Cards had a lot to live up to may be an understatement of the entire junk wax era. After all, not only was the 1987 Topps jam-packed with more rookie cards than the next 10 Bowman Master Boxes combined, but the wood grain design is also a stone-cold classic. Love them or hate them, you'll never forget them. So yeah, the 1988s had a hard row to hoe. They came out of the gate strong, though, with a clean classic design that combined elements of the 1957, 1966, and 1967 Topps issues, as well as arguably the best photography of the decade up to that point. Okay, 1983 Topps and 1988 score, and maybe some others could take up the argument, too. But it quickly became clear that the 1988 set was lacking in impact rookie cards, at least compared to the 1987s. And it didn't take too long for something else to emerge. These things were everywhere, even if Topps Everywhere was somewhat less expansive than Donruss's own Everywhere. Still, there were plenty of superstars and future Hall of Famers in the 792 card checklist, and there were also some surprises and add-ons, but more on that later. And as often happens, some young players eventually emerged to make this set seem a bit better than it appeared there for a while. And there's plenty of variety, too. Subsets, packaging options, parallels. You can find all the gory details in our 1988 Topps Ultimate Guide. What we're left with, then, is a 30-plus-year-old set that looks great and is affordable in most grades, but can pop some decent prices when slabbed in perfect condition. So what follows is the list of the most valuable 1988 Topps baseball cards based on actual selling prices for PSA 10 copies, as listed in the PSA Auction Prices Realized tool. And while we won't talk about them explicitly here, you should know that there is a super glossy Tiffany version of almost every card on this list. Generally speaking, you can expect those more limited cards, about 25,000 of each were produced, to sell for 8 to 10 times their mate counterparts, again in PSA 10. Now, let's dig in, starting with the least valuable card and working up, and see where the little white triangles end up. You'll understand more on that later. Can you guess which card tops our list? Number 25. 1988 Tops Ken Caminiti, number 64. Caminiti is sort of forgotten in the modern baseball landscape, and he's usually not remembered all that fondly when he does come to mind. One of the first guys to wear the PED taint, his story spiraled to a tragic ending after he hung up his spikes. But the fact remains that the 1996 National League MVP was one of the game's best hitters in the mid-1990s, just before the full-on power explosion of 1998 and beyond. While his cards may not have tons of upward potential on their own, they are likely to maintain decent value relative to the lesser stars and commons of his era. His 1988 Topps rookie card shows him with the Astros several years before he hit his peak with the Padres. Value $30 to $35. Number 24. 1988 Topps Roger Clemens, number 395. When this card was issued, Clemens was coming off two straight Cy Young Awards and amazingly had five more left in his tank. Of course, it's how he kept that tank full and his motor running that have left him of something of a pariah and on the outside of the Hall of Fame looking in. Considering he stands as one of the greatest pitchers of all time, at least statistically, that could still change. And even if it doesn't, this is a gorgeous early career card that can usually be yours for a relatively modest sum. Value $30 to $35. Number 23. 1988 Topps Wade Boggs, number 200. Entering 1988, Boggs was right in the middle of his prime, a five-year run during which he recorded 8-plus war each summer and won four of his five batting titles. Though he slowed down to a significant degree after his fifth crown in 1988, Boggs finished his incredible career with a ridiculous 328 batting average and 3,010 hits. One of the top five or so third basemen of all time, he looms as a popular hobby figure even decades after his retirement. Like others on this list, the 1988 Topps Boggs card is great looking at a reasonable price. Value $30 to $35. Number 22. 1988 Topps Fred McGriff, number 463. If Fred McGriff had smacked just seven more home runs, would he have already been elected to the Hall of Fame? That's about as rhetorical a baseball question as you're likely to find, given that seven dingers would have left Crime Dog with an even 500 for his career. For all but members of the PED crowd, from which most observers exclude McGriff, that's an automatic in. 
When and if McGriff does make it into Cooperstown, his first base tops card, this one that is, seems like a good bet to jump up at price. Value $30 to $35. Number 21. 1988 Topps Rain Sandberg, number 10. There's nothing especially historically significant about this Sandberg card, given that the Cubs and their second baseman were in sort of a holding pattern between division titles in 1984 and 1989. It's just that Rhino's holding pattern, including a continued string of gold gloves and all-star appearances, as he built his reputation as one of the greatest Keystone men ever. When he cranked up his power in 1989, and especially 1990, with a league-leading 40 home runs, Sandberg's card surged to new levels, and they've been hobby stalwarts ever since. And this one features the fabled cubby pinstripes, always a popular look. Value $30 to $45. Number 20. 1988 Topps Kirby Puckett, number 120. If the world wasn't paying attention to Kirby Puckett before 1987, the Minnesota Twin spark plug made us all sit up and take notice with his breakout campaign that helped the Twinkies to the first World Series title that fall. This card captures Puck in the midst of that magical season, and he'd follow that up with an even better numbers in 1988. Puckett was here to stay, at least until his body broke down, and so were his cards. Value, 35 to $40. Number 19. 1988 Topps Don Mattingly, number 386. By 1988, pretty much any Mattingly card you came across was pure hobby gold. That's what happens when a guy comes out of nowhere to win a batting title and then quickly establishes himself as the next Yankee superstar. In this case, the gold takes on yet another meaning thanks to the blinding yellow background on the Hitman's popular all-star card. Value, $35 to $40. Number 18. 1988 Topps Dwight Gooden, number 480. Gooden posted his first down year in 1987, managing a 15-7 record with a 3.21 ERA. Amazing numbers for a mere human, but something of a letdown for Dr. K after the dominance of his first three seasons. He rebounded with 18 wins in 1988, though, which made this card, like Mattingly's, a winner right out of the pack. Of course, we know now that Doc would have more down than up over the rest of his career, but his early cards, like this one, still carry some hobby swagger. Value, 40 to $45. Number 17. 1988 Topps Matt Williams, number 372. If not for the 1994 strike, Matt Williams might have taken aim at Roger Maris' single-season home run record. And if the Giants' young slugger had pulled that off, the entire history of Major League Baseball might have been altered. Would we have seen or needed the home run chase of 1998? Would steroids have exploded to the same degree they did? Would Williams have put together a Hall of Fame career? As things actually played out, Carson Crusher ended up shy of 50 war and 400 home runs, but with a Topps rookie card that still carries some weight with collectors. Value $40 to $45. Number 16. 1988 Topps Tom Glavin, number 779. Glavin wowed the world with a 3 and 4 5.54 ERA showing in his first cup of coffee at the end of 1987, then followed that up with a major league leading 17 losses in 1988. Boy howdy, beginnings didn't get much more auspicious than that, huh? Glavin, of course, managed to turn things around pretty nicely in 1990, helping the Braves to a string of division titles that may never be matched. And with 305 wins and two Cy Young Awards to his name, Glavin pretty much did a good job of turning around his fortunes of his 1988 Topps Rookie Card 2. Value, $45 to $50. Number 15. 1988 Topps Tony Gwynn, number 360. After blistering baseballs to the tune of 351 to win the first batting title in 1984, Gwynn slid back below 330 in 1985 and 1986. Still great, but not jaw-dropping. Well, Mr. Padre decided to unhinge some faces again in 1987, leading the majors with a 370 batting average and solidifying his status as one of the game's greatest hitters. This 1988 Topps card shows a primetime Gwynn in his office, doing what he did better than almost anyone ever. Value, $45 to $50. Number 14. 1988 Topps George Brett, number 700. After batting 290 in both 1986 and 1987, Brett seemed to be entering the home stretch of his career, until he reversed course and hit 306 in 1988, also topping 20 home runs and 100 RBI for the last time. 
The fireworks weren't quite over, though, as Brent won his third batting title in 1990 and collected his 3,000th hit in 1992 before retiring a lead pipe Hall of Fame lock after the 1993 season. Along the way, Mullet's cards rose to the upper echelon of hobby royalty, and they haven't slid much from that peak in the year since. Value, $45 to $50. Number 13. 1988 tops Nolan Ryan turn back the clock, number 661. Take a hunk of cardboard, add some Nolan Ryan, and wrap a swath of wax paper around it, and you have yourself a pasteboard destined to appear on any number of most valuable lists. And when you're in the heart of the junk wax era like we are now, it doesn't even take a base card for Ryan to crack the lineup. Here we have the turn back the clock celebration of Ryan passing Walter Payton's strikeout record, a feat also accomplished by Steve Carlton and Gaylord Perry back in 1983. Value $45 to $60. Number 12. 1988 Topps Wade Boggs All-Star number 388. The 1988 Topps All-Star cards were a throwback to the bright colors and geometric shapes of issues from the past. 1963 Fleer, 1958 All-Stars, and even 1986 All-Stars. Throw in any superstar into the mix and he'll stand out on a dealer's case, making it hard for collectors to resist. Case in point, Chicken Man, bathed in All-Star red, white, blue, and yellow. Value, $55 to $60. Number 11. 1988 Topps Mike Schmidt, number 600. Schmidt hit 30 home runs, actually 35 for the last time in 1987, and Topps chose to celebrate by putting his hair on backwards. Still, this is a late card of the greatest third baseman of all time, so it's going to have its supporters and buyers. Value, $55 to $60. Number 10. 1988 Topps Greg Maddox, number 361. Greg Maddox entered the 1988 season with a career record of 8 and 18 with a 5.59 ERA. With rookie cards in the loaded 1987 Donra set and the hobby only 1987 Topps traded and Fleer update sets, Mad Dog was more of a messy puppy on the mound and in the hobby. Then came 1988 and a complete reversal, of course. 18 and 8, 3.18, and a first base Topps card. It was off to the races from there for the professor, a trick that ended with a Hall of Fame plaque and an icon status in the game and in the hobby. Value $55 to $65. Number 9. 1988 Topps Mark McGuire, number 580. During the Homer Happy Summer of 1987, Mark McGuire was the guy who generated more smiles than any other slugger. A harbinger of things to come when he and Sammy Sosa took aim at Roger Maris 11 years later. McGuire's 49 homers in 1987 stood as a rookie record until Aaron Judge and Pete Alonso came along and sent collectors scrambling to dig his 1985 Topps Team USA card out of the near commons bin. His prestigious power also made his 1987 cards instant classics. By comparison then, Big Mac's 1988 Topps issue was anticlimactic, but it still looked slash looks great, showing the young Bash brother with his weapon of choice. That Golden Topps All-Star Rookie Trophy completes the tableau. Value $55 to $65. Number 8. 1988 Topps Don Mattingly, number 300. By 1988, Don Mattingly had already cemented his status as a Yankee legend, which is really saying something. More importantly for us here, Manning and his 1984 Donruss rookie card had changed our hobby forever. While rookie cards had already gained a stronghold by the mid-1980s, the Manning rookie changed our perception of what was possible, price-wise, for a brand new card. And just about every Donnie baseball that slid out of a pack through the rest of the decade was a gem to behold, and definite score. Manning may still be on the outside looking in when it comes to the Hall of Fame, and 1988 tops may fit that definition of junk wax to a T, but this card still has plenty of fans even today. Value is $60 to $70. Number 7. 1988 tops Jose Conseco, number 370. After setting the world and the hobby on fire in 1986, Conseco took a backseat to Mark McGuire during the power field summer of 1987. The rookie outslugged the second-year star 49-31 after all, and Conseco's numbers were just good. Not superstar, next Babe Ruth good. Jose was having none of that out-of-the-limelight stuff, though, and set his sights on something that hadn't been done before. 40 homers and 40 stolen bases in the same season. By the end of 1988, Conseco had indeed become the inaugural member of the 40-40 club, copying American League MVP honors and leading the A's to the World Series in the process. 
Along the way, he reignited his cards, and some of that swagger still lingers today, even though Jose has fell short of the Hall of Fame. Value $65 to $70. Number 6. 1988 tops Nolan Ryan record breaker. Number 6. In 1987, Nolan Ryan set a record. Shocker, right? This particular mark was for the most 200 strikeout seasons, 11 for the Express, though of course he finished up with 15 such campaigns before all was said and done. Regardless of what still lay ahead, Top celebrated the moment in 1988 with a record breaker card that feels very 1958, and one that's still a hobby hit even today. Value is $60 to $80. Number 5. 1988 Tops Cal Ripken Jr. Number 650. The 1987 Orioles played like your basic jar of bird spit, and the 88 club took that down a notch or two. At least fans could still count on Eddie Murray and Cal Ripken Jr., though Iron Cal's production slipped in both seasons. Even at that early stage, it was enough for some to suggest that he should take a day or two off every once in a while. Nah. And it's sort of a good thing he didn't, because we needed all the good vibes we could get when baseball came back from the 1994-95 strike, and Ripken's case for Lou Gehrig's consecutive games played streak made us feel our warm and fuzzy. For that, and for so much more, even mundane rib cards like this one from the dark reaches of his career carry a special appeal. Value, $70 to $90. Number 4. 1988 Tops Barry Bonds, number 450. As 1988 dawned, Barry Bonds was all about tools and potential. Scouts raved about what he might do on the diamond, even if his numbers weren't all that exciting. Sure, he went 20-20 and 20 in 1987, but that 261 batting average didn't look so great. And in a world full of mashers, 25 dingers was an afterthought. Even Wade Boggs hit 24 that summer. Of course, Barry would prove the talent evaluators right, winning two MVP awards and leading the Pirates into October, way before most observers even knew what PED meant. For all his warts, Bonds was one of the greatest hitters of all time, and he still likely will end up in Cooperstown, someday. All of which keeps his cards, including this rare smiling shot, on lists like this one. Value $80 to $85. Number 3. 1988 Top Spo Jackson, number 750. Bo Jackson was undoubtedly one of the most talented players to ever set foot on a baseball diamond or a baseball field, and it was devastating to fans everywhere when his hip injury ended his gridiron career and curtailed his ascension into hardball royalty. Still, Bo gave us plenty of special baseball memories and one of the most beautiful cards of the entire 1980s, this 1988 top standy, before he hung up his spikes in 1994. Value $75 to $100. Number 2. 1988 tops Nolan Ryan number 250. Although the one loss record of 8 and 16 didn't show it, Ryan turned in a stellar season with the Astros in 1987, winning the National League ERA with a 2.76 and strikeouts 270 crowns. He followed that up with another strikeout title in 1988 at the same time Tops was gracing collectors with this rainbow sighting. The next year, of course, Ryan moved on to the Texas Rangers, where he solidified his standing as a bona fide legend and drove all of his cards to the top of the hobby. They're hardly budged ever since. Value $90 to $125. Number 1. 1988 Tops Ricky Henderson, number 60. Was there ever a more exciting player than Ricky Henderson? I mean, aside from Buddy Biancalana in his prime. I'll bet Ricky himself would say no one topped him on the excitement meter, and he backed all that bluster and fireworks with plenty of meat. 3,000 plus hits, nearly 300 home runs, 1,406 stolen bases, 2,295 runs. The SB and runs totals are all-time records, and Henderson also owns the single-season steals mark with 130 in 1982. Oh, and he also won the 1990 American League MVP award and pretty much played forever. And if you like your stats with a bit more sabermetrics bent, Henderson's 111.2 war currently ranks 14th among position players ever. Little wonder then that the Man of Steel still lights up the hobby, or that his 1988 Topps Yankee card remains pretty darn popular. Value $100 to $150. Honorable Mention So those are the most valuable 1988 Topps cards, but only among the base issue, and only when you don't consider any special circumstances. And in the case of this set, special means errors and variations, more often than not. 
Yep, after several years of pretty much flawless execution, or at least without much in the way of corrections issued, Topps fueled the errors and variation fire in 1988 with a handful of doozies. And there just may be one other, even more super-duper special entry among our honorable mentions. Behold. Number 7. 1988 Topps Mark McGuire, Record Breaker, Corrected, No White Triangle, Number 3. This is your standard run-of-the-mill 1988 Topps Mark McGuire record breaker. It celebrates his rookie home runs but lags behind another that's coming up a few slots higher on this list. Value $30 to $35. Number 6. 1988 Topps Al Leiter Error, number 18. Al Leiter once was a hotshot prospect for the New York Yankees, a left-hander they drafted in the second round in 1984. By 1987, he was knocking on the door of the majors, and by 1988, he had his first Topps card. That's where Leiter ran into problems, because Topps thought Steve George was him. Steve George was not Al Leiter. Steve George was the 15th round pick in 1982, though he was a fellow left-hander in the Yankee system. And Steve George appeared as Al Leiter on the first version of Leiter's Topps rookie card. Eventually, Topps caught on to their gaff, or collectors did, and corrected course. Then Al Leiter was Al Leiter again, and Steve George was, well, never to be seen on a Major League Baseball card again. Pictured as the error card featuring George. Value $30 to $35. Number 5. 1988 Tops Al Leiter Corrected, Number 18. This is the real Al Leiter, a face you might recognize from your baseball cards and his work on the Major League Baseball Network. Value $30 to $35. Number 4. 1988 Topps Eddie Murray Record Breaker, no caption on front, number four. Hmm, just a card showing the great Eddie Murray coming at you from both sides of the plate. What's going on here, and why is this one an honorable mention? Value, 50 to $60. Number three, 1988 Topps Eddie Murray caption in box on card front, number four. Murray was one of the most consistent run producers in the game, and he could do it from both sides of the plate. Topps gave a nod to that fact in 1988 with a record breaker card celebrating Murray's two consecutive games going deep from both sides in 1987. Trouble was, the old gum company had some trouble landing on a format, resulting in two variations of this card, with a caption box on the card front detailing Murphy's feet, more scarce, and without in the box. Both are great, sort of like two sides of Murray's batting approach. Value, 75 to $85. Number two. 1988 Topps Mark McGuire Record Breaker Error White Triangle Number 3 McGuire's 49 home runs in 1987 were a rookie record, which prompted Topps to make a record breaker card to honor the achievement in 1988. Then they threw us a curveball by issuing two versions of the card, one with a white triangle near Big Mac's left foot, which is to our right, and one without the triangle. While the white triangle card is considered to be an error and seems to exist in fewer quantities, if you hold your head just right, you might be convinced that it's all part of McGuire's shoe. If that's the case, the corrected version, no triangle, is actually the error. Confusing, yes, but only truly important if you want both versions, and because the triangle version generally sells for a premium. Value $75 to $150. Number 1. 1988 Topps Don Mattingly World of Baseball, number 300. This one is generally viewed as a promo card, likely used by Topps to drum up interest in the set that would eventually be released in the United Kingdom, even though those cards featured a different design entirely. Pretty smart move by Topps, right? After all, if you're going to use one player from the 1980s to promote baseball cards, you couldn't have done any better than Don Mattingly. The downside for us is that there are not many of these cards out there, so this will most surely be the most expensive 1988 Topps card you have to buy if you're bent on completing a super duper master all inclusive set. Value $300 to $600. 1988 Topps traded. Thanks to base cards and even pre rookie cards that most of the guys who broke out during the 1987 season, the various traded and updated sets issued that fall were pretty lackluster when it came to player selection. So the hobby was a bit uncertain about how the 1988 Topps traded set would fare, at least until we saw the checklist. Bolstered with some emerging names who had not yet made their Topps debut, and then infused with the stars of the 1988 USA Olympic baseball team, Topps traded was a hit right out of the gate, um, or, or cardboard rectangular prism. 
And while the popularity of various cards have ebbed and flowed over the decades, the set still delivers a hobby punch all these years later. Here are the best of the best. Number 5. 1988 Tops Traded Robin Ventura, number 124T. An Olympic star alongside Jim Abbott and Tino Martinez, Ventura developed into one of the best defensive third basemen of his generation and put together a career that wouldn't look totally out of place in Cooperstown. As it stands, Ventura is mostly a Hall of Fame very good type of player who is remembered for his, um, fight, if you can call it that, with Nolan Ryan. It all adds up to enough lime lamp trickle to keep his card warmer than collectors. Value 20 to $25. Number 4. 1988 Tops traded Tino Martinez, number 66T. Tino Martinez was Robin Ventura, and Robin Ventura was Tino Martinez. Both born in 1967, both college and Olympic stars. Both played 16 seasons in the majors. Both hit around 300 home runs with 1,200 or 1,300 or so RBI. Both played for the Yankees. Overall, Ventura put up better war numbers, Martinez better county numbers. And Tino won four World Series during his time with the Bronx, so he probably had a higher profile overall. But Ventura was a much better fielder. I still can't tell their careers apart, though, and their 1988 Tops traded cards are both in that mildly desirable bucket that keeps prices trending upwards with the overall market. Value $20 to $25. Number 3. 1988 Tops traded Mark Grace, number 42T. In a full set of Olympians and really young prospects, Grace sort of looked like a grizzled veteran headed into his age 24 season. He wore that experience well, too, riding three years of minor league seasoning to a 296 debut season with the Cubs that landed him in second place in the National League Rookie of the Year balloting in 1988. He only got better from there, developing into one of the best high average guys in the game and a gold glove first baseman en route to a borderline Hall of Fame resume and a solid standing in the hobby. Value $25 to $35. Number 2. 1988 Tops traded Jim Abbott, number 1T. Abbott was an amazing story, first for his triumph in making it to the Olympics and the pros despite being born with just one hand, and then by turning into a Cy Young contender for the California Angels. Not many pitchers can even say that, and the ones that can tend to stick around in hobby circles to some degree. And so it is with Abbott and his nifty 1988 Tops Team USA card, value 40 to $45. Number 1. 1988 Tops traded Roberto Alomar, number 4T. For all the promise and hype presented by this little 132 guard box set, Alomar is the only Hall of Fame rookie card in the bunch all these years later. And even then, Donruss beat Tops to the punch by issuing an Alomar rookie card in their base set. Still, this is a classic card that's drawn plenty of interest over the decades. Value 40 to $50.